I did not know this book existed. So I just thought I was weird. Well, I am weird, but I just thought I was weird because I'm buying things because who cares what he looks like? Check out the back. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Check that out. You know, there is just some fantastic artistry. This one's even dated. You know, yeah. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget fine. You can take or leave me, but you ain't got much time. Because I just keep on rolling down the line. Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a little while, you've noticed that I've taken a little bit of a left turn and I'm still focusing on vintage and antiques, but I've shifted into primarily focusing on reselling ephemera. Many reasons for that. Uh, one, I really enjoy it. Uh, but two, I this is a side hustle for me and I'm selling on eBay. I still sell on my YouTube channel. I sell on Instagram, wherever I can. I find that I'm having a tough time finding the time to actually do the sales and then ship things out. So when I was selling what I used to focus on, glass and porcelain, every time I'd sell something, it would take quite a bit of time to then package that properly, making sure it wasn't going to break during transit, finding a box that was the right size, blah, blah, blah. Ephemera fits in an envelope and it's fantastically easy and inexpensive to ship. So really kind of loving it. And trying to figure out what niche I would like to stay in. And one of the things that I've uh, stumbled across, because you really can't avoid them, are things like this. So you've got these small scale photographs that are on cardstock that have, or on uh, heavier cards, uh, that have, sometimes will have graphics on the back, sometimes they do not. And there are two sizes that are popular for these. Uh, the smaller one, uh, popularly known as a CDV, card de visite, as uh, a smaller size. And then you also get the larger size, the cabinet cards. Uh, you can kind of put those side by side. Um, uh, it, they kind of are interchangeable. Some people call these CDVs, some people call these cabinet cards. I'm not going to try and get into the specifics because I don't know enough to necessarily say one is right or one is wrong, but I just know Colloquially, these are the terms that I've been coming across and seem to be somewhat standardized. Smaller ones are CDV, larger ones are cabinet cards. But what this video is actually going to talk about is the back, the back marks, the back marks, the back stamps. Because what a lot of people are going to be focusing on when they're purchasing cabinet cards is what does the image look like? A lot of them will have information on the bottom, you know, the photographer's name, Floyd, saying it's a photographer. This was taken in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. If you're really lucky, you'll actually have a name written on the back to indicate who the individual was. Sometimes you'll even have a year. But the, the purchase or the interest is in the image on the front. So you've got this gentleman, Al. You also have this one. It also happens to be from Lock Haven. Uh, this one, uh, three-quarter image of a woman who also is a mater. So this is the sister-in-law of Al. So these two I purchased together and will kind of stay together and might be interested because they're related, but you know, predominantly they're going to be interested in because of their appearance. You know, fantastic facial hair on this guy. You know, again, you've got the name of the photographer at the bottom, Stem and Smith, extra finish in Tyrone, Pennsylvania, and a name on the back, but nothing else. What I stumbled across, and I remember one of the very first ones I ever bought, was a cabinet card. This was the image on the front. Sure, whatever. It's a kid, no big deal. Does have some cool information on the bottom because it's from Reading, Pennsylvania. But check out the back. I'd never seen the red and the gold before. And I found this fa fascinating. I personally find this side far more interesting than the kid on the front, but I felt I was in a minority until I found this book. So this book is the American Backmark, the Art and Artistry of the Card de Visite imprint from 1860 to 1890. It's written by Mark Chalabala. I apologize if I just slaughtered your name, Mark, but there it is. There it is in print. So he printed this book. I did not know this book existed. So I just thought I was weird. Well, I am weird, but I just thought I was weird because I'm buying things because who cares what he looks like? Check out the back. 
Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Check that out. You know, there is just some fantastic artistry. This one's even dated. You know, we have the wonderful, some people would like him because of his hat or it's a full, full body. I'm all about what was happening in the back. But I just thought that was just me being weird um, until I came across this. And what this book is, now this does focus on the smaller ones. This does focus on the CDVs. So what I just showed were all cabinet cards that I happened to purchase. I did have some uh, CDVs as well, but I just kind of show, pulled those out because they showcase the back marks very nicely. This one, what he did, he said it took him over 10 years to pull this book together because what he did was he categorized all of the back marks that he found and recreated them in illustrated form in this book. So what I wanted to go through is kind of highlight some of the ones that I have uh, and compare them with the categories that he's created here. So one of the first ones I wanted to show, I actually have a, have it as a bookmark. This is actually a wonderful image. Uh, it's one of, of a full length um, 19th century, uh, late Civil War era after Civil War, but you know, with the, still with the hoop skirt, fantastic image with the pillar that also has a back mark uh, for Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Condit and Hollis Gallery of Art. So this one has a floral cartouche. You can see kind of the little, I don't know, cabbage roses, whatever those are at the top and the bottom with the vines. He has a section of his book, which is catalog cut botanical. So the catalog cut, and there's different ways that you can, if you get into the idea of the back marks, there's the idea is, did the photographer actually custom design a uh, stencil or just custom design an image that would go on the back that would be unique for that specific photographer? Or did he or she, well, I think almost all of them are he, did he take a catalog image, which is the flowers, and then print his information in the middle of the circle. So what you've got on this one is the image of the back mark for this Wilkes-Barre photographer. When you compare it to this page in the catalog, it's the exact same illustration, but this was for the TL Rivers Company in St. Louis, Missouri. So this would have been something they would have purchased the paper stock would have been purchased um, in basically in bulk. And then when they were developed with the photograph attached, they would be, they'd have the blanks, uh, they would purchase the blanks, they'd get their name printed. They would then have stacks and stacks and stacks of those. And then that's what the photograph would be printed onto. Or you had things like this one, relatively you know simple image on the front you'd have this image that's actually the photo, the photograph atelier. Uh, this is in Germany, I believe. This obviously was designed specifically for this photographer, K. Frank. Why would anyone else want an image of the Frank photography studio for photography atelier on the back of their cards? So there's different ways uh, and themes that you can use to collect the back marks because you've got, these would be far more uh, unique because you would only come across them on images that were done by the Frank Photography Studio. This, just as I showed with the catalog, it's probably going to be in dozens, if not hundreds of photograph uh, studios around the country because they liked that image and they just put their um, information in the cartouche. So as you go through the catalog, unfortunately that's the only one that I found had some similarities. Um, there is a category of the of buildings uh, that is in this section here, customized art photography studio. So you remember the other one was catalog cut. So this is the, the customized art because all of these examples, again, who else would want an image of these photo studios other than that photographer? So in collecting back marks, these would be theoretically far more rare because you're only going to come across them based on how long that photographer was actually in business. What I found interesting, and I don't have any of this example, 
they also have customized art that are not the studio building. So as you look at these, these I would love to come across because these are showing images of buildings in the area, but not specifically of the photo studio. So, you know, this was, um, looks like that's the Capitol building, even though this one's actually in, uh, oh yeah, it's in, on Pennsylvania Avenue. So this was a DC based uh, photo studio. And so they're using the Capitol building. So these might be a little bit more prevalent because it would be possible that um, if somebody picked up that design, any photographer studio in DC might want to have the, a Capitol building. Uh, but as then the art is done, it's got the name of the photographer uh, around it that um, is going to limit it and make it again more customized. There's images like this. Again, front, fine, nothing special, interesting hair. Uh, and people would you know, want this instant relative makes a fantastic uh, addition to any sort of collection. But again, just check out the back of this and you can get into geographical collections. So like several in the, in the catalog that he's created are based in Illinois. So I could sit there and try and find towns that are around me that showcase uh, Illinois. This one happens to be Troy, New York. I have, a, I have a lot from the East coast. And so again, this would be customized because you've got the name has been incorporated into this entire design and in lo location of Franklin Square. It's unlikely that this same design would have been in the catalog because it would have been difficult to customize that with everyone else's name. Um, something like this would have been a catalog image. So this one is what he's cataloged as a cherub style. But you can see this would have been pr printed in its simplest design with that banner across the middle being blank. And then when you purchased it, you could put your name, W. McHenry, into the middle of it, along with your information down at the bottom, showing where your studio is. The, the comparable section that he's created in the catalog, catalog cut cherub, has far more elaborate samples. Because again, as he was pulling together the catalog, he wanted to grab examples that you know really showcased in this case, the use of cherubs in the back marks. And so this kind of becomes its own little collecting subcategory because if you particularly are interested in cherubs, you would be able to find these. Again, these are catalog cuts. So these would be would have been available more theoretically in mass uh, that would have been available through multiple photographers. So you could find one design you really like and try and find every photographer that picked it up or you just pick up all of the uh, cherub pieces and instead of displaying your card image side out, you line them up with all of the cherub side out and it would make a fantastic collection. Uh, this example, I, I don't really know what this is considered. Uh, obviously it's like some sort of a constellation. I'm assuming that this is also a catalog cut copy that you could have just purchased that kind of in the stars. I don't, it's, I don't think it's the big or little dipper, but I'm not exactly sure what it would be. Um, this one happens to be Davis, rich in Richmond, Virginia. Good looking gentleman on the front with that big, big tie. Um, I'm not sure what this falls into in the, in the uh, category, but the other categories that are in the catalog, just to kind of showcase, show you the botanical. I have had some of these in the past, but I couldn't find them, the banner design. So again, you'd get this look with all of this little we weaving banner, and then you would print your own text in the banner. So again, it's a, it looks custom, but it's really generic because you just have to fit all of your text within the curves of what the banners show. Um, one of my favorite sections is also on the catalog cut. It's the aesthetic movement. In general, I like the aesthetic movement myself. I just find the arts and designs that are done for that, I find them really attractive. Uh, this gives a little bit of a history. Um, it was primarily from the 1870s. It said the hay, by kind of the peak period was 1876, the centennial, uh, the centennial uh, exposition. But you can see a lot of motifs, cranes, we've got you know some Egyptian, some uh, Far East, Middle East designs. Uh, it, aesthetic basically became art for the sake of art. 
Uh, you just, you wanted to have it be decorative and there were specific designs that were considered attractive and they had somewhat of an Asian motif, at least that's what I'm familiar with. And I showed one of them earlier, this red one, you can see at the bottom, you know, those uh, leaves, that bird in the frame, that uh, circle motif in the behind the frame, the fact that there's a circle with the rectangle, the fact they're combining um, uh, rectilinear images with curved images is a very aesthetic um, design. Again, this is a cabinet card, so not covered in the CDVs, but I could, I would love to sink my teeth into some of the designs that he's showing here because they're, you know, right at a glance, you know what era they are, and they're just over the top in design. They're, there's like basically the height of Victoriana because we are in the middle of the Victorian era in 1876 at East Lake, you know, there's a lot of designs that overlap each other. And it's the aesthetic movement is just one of them that I find super, super attractive, particularly in print, because it's just a lot of architectural motifs, things that just really show up really nicely uh, when you're dealing with them in print. Um, another section, which would be really popular as a collectible is the transportation. Again, these are catalog cuts, so these would probably be readily available. Well, not readily available, but more available because more people would have had them. But, you know, sailing ships, bicycle, check out the hot air balloon, you know, all of these different motifs. He just did a beautiful job pulling them together in this catalog. The catalog itself is 250 pages long. So there's a lot in here. Uh, I don't really see myself, you know, going through trying to check off individual designs, but definitely checking out some of the concept of the designs. I'm going to be trying to find some examples of each of the individual, you know, word art is one of the categories. So these are customized because you're, that's kind of like that photographer one I showed earlier. Um, it's only going to be available in that design of that artist's name because it is customized to their print. The, in general, CDVs and cabinet cards do not sell for that much money. Um, if they're in bad condition, they sell for very little. You can get them for like a buck. Um, the better the design, and I will just say from my limited experience, the ones that have a better representation of the uh, particularly female fashion, but male as well, um, if you can see what they're wearing, and even if in some cases, like this is a photo studio backdrop. I mean, he's leaning, in, it looks like he's almost against a tree stump. Um, but there was like the one with the full dress. They, they can bring more money. These are going to be a little bit more attractive because people are interested in them specifically for the fashion. So a lot of times you are going to be looking at them and you're going to be competing for them based on the front. I know I've participated in auctions. I've gone online. In some cases, they don't even show the back because they feel like all the money and all the interest is in the front. I really encourage you to look at the back because as you start looking at some of the images, you know, this, this guy, it's a kind of a profile shot, not particularly interesting, not particularly interesting uh, clothing, but check out the back. You know, this is something, put this on an easel. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. It's got the architecture into it. It's got all the awards made. Like, so there's custom name, custom word art. Like, this is just you know, a portrait. Like, all of these little subcategories of collecting are all brought in into one. Again, this is a cabinet card. Now, he has not done a book on cabinet card. I don't think he, he joked about it. I don't think he's planning to do a book on cabinet cards because it would probably take him 20 years to do that. Uh, and this one took him 10 just to do the CDVs. But the concepts and the design collectability pretty much follows the same. And you can use this book as the jumping off point to find a collection that you're interested in or find some designs that you want to chase down. So I hope you found this interesting. I do encourage you to uh, get the book. Uh, I'm assuming it's available online. I bought this directly from him. If you cannot find the book, let me know. I can get you his information. Um, but it is the American book, Mar uh, American back Mark, and it is published by Ina Bindery Press, a division of Base Clef Creations. But 
I'm sure you can find it online or again, if you need information, need help, I will help you find him. Um, Cause I'd love to be able to support him. He even signed my copy. Um, it's a cool book, definitely uh, worth some reading and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.